would it mean to be able to talk to angels? How would that change your life? Join us now on Angel Talk Tuesday as the Psychic Angel Channelers, Julie Geigel and Susan Schuler allow angels to speak directly through them, sharing messages from beyond. As you bathe in the vibrational frequency of the angels here, you will begin to open up to a stronger and clearer communication of your own. The purpose of this show is to help you awaken, expand, and remember the magnificent being that you are and the mission you came here to fulfill. Welcome, welcome. This is Julie Geigel, International Psychic Medium and Trance Channeler for Archangel Metatron. You are listening to Angel Talk Tuesday. And we are live. We're live here today. And um, welcome, welcome. So this is our energy forecast for December 11th through the 17th. And um, again, this is Angel Talk Tuesday. I've got the beautiful Susan Schuler with us uh, live this morning. And we are going to be uh, sharing some beautiful channeled messages from Archangel Metatron and Jacob, uh, the master, a master teacher of the Akasha. And I would love to invite you to join us. I host a annual Manifesting Mastermind and our uh, annual Manifesting Mastermind is coming up January 8th. So I'm offering a sneak peek. It's a one hour live, incredibly powerful mastermind. Uh, this is the eighth mastermind I've hosted. And uh, the people that are in the mastermind are, the feedback I've gotten from the people in the mastermind is incredible. So, and I always, always love to host these. They last for 28 days. And um, it really is an opportunity to take your manifesting ability to another level. It's very, very exciting. And with this new energy that we're in right now, it is so amazing. I mean, you literally think about something and boom, it instantly appears in your life. So kind of the um, be careful what you wish for. Uh, but definitely, definitely, you can find out more information about our Manifesting Mastermind number eight, our sneak peek coming up in 2018 on my website at juliegeigel.com. And you can also find me over on Facebook at Heaven Sent Healing. And I uh, am just excited, excited for the new year coming, letting go of stuff that doesn't serve you anymore and stepping into the power of the new earth energy yeah it's it's waiting for us it's here right now we just need to be present and that's what we're going to be talking about today with our december um 11th energy forecast and before i forget this is a very powerful day, December 12th, 1212. And I am a numerology girl. I tell you, I love numbers, love, love, love numbers. And 1212 is a very, very exciting day because it is a transmission day is kind of what I'm hearing from Metatron. There is another set of downloads that are being uh, given to all of us, especially light workers. So there's like a portal opening up on this day. And as you tune in and listen, listen to our channeling and our messages this morning, you will be receiving a lovely transmission of energy to help you anchor in and ground yourself uh, to make room for so much that's coming in your life. So many exciting and new and beautiful blessings. Yay. All right. Well, I can feel Metatron talking too much. Time to go. <laughs> Time to get rolling, if you will. Okay. So I am actually channeling live here on, uh, I don't think I got YouTube to work, but um, I'm going to try that one more time. But we, I will be uploading this uh, to YouTube. 
and uh, you can watch me channel live over on YouTube. So wait or watch for that this morning. It's kind of fun. All right, so we're going to go ahead and ring those beautiful tinctia bells and it's going to clear out any lower frequencies. We do have the incredible crystal bed going again, opening up that beautiful portal, that vortex of energy today. Welcome, I am Metatron. We come to you today with much love and excitement as we open up a portal and begin the transmissions now. Welcoming in the Pleiadians. So in order to receive the fullness of this transmission, simply place your hand on your heart and imagine opening, opening and receiving. Feel yourself grounding and anchoring in this transmission. Allow your energy to become soft. releasing any resistance from the ego. Letting go of any fears that are preventing you, holding you back from aligning with your highest good. The chains are being lifted. You are no longer being held in bondage. There is a beautiful perfection occurring within your universe that is assisting in the totality of your being. Your energy is best spent this week taking a step back and being an observer. This is the time to gather information, to consider all possibilities to do your research. It is not the time for hasty decisions, knee-jerk reactions, or impulsive buying. As you move into your second week of Mercury retrograde, we are here to help you to understand the energy, for it is a completely different energy that arises during your Mercury retrogrades than at any other time 
in the year. You may have found in the past that you have met with much resistance during a retrograde, much fear, as they can be difficult to manage. But we invite you now to let that go, to release those fears, frustration, to welcome retrograde into your life. It is a beautiful opportunity to restart, to reflect, to renew yourself. And this week, as we have mentioned, it is a time for reflection, a time to step back and look at the bigger picture of your life, of your opportunities that might be presenting themselves to you. Within your stepping back, retreating, we invite you to incorporate into your day meditation or as Julie likes to call it, quiet time. The number one reason we encourage you to incorporate presence into your life is because it gives us an opportunity to speak to you. It allows divine inspiration to flow through you You may have heard before that everything you want and need, you already have and are. This is incredibly true on many levels. You are the block to your success. When you become busy within your life, you drown out the voice of spirit, the voice of your own higher self, who is constantly guiding and assisting you with each moment of your day. your own fears, your own frustration prevents you from hearing that angelic voice, that soft whisper, those knowing words. So, Imagine being in a quiet space now, opening your ears and imagine a beautiful cleansing and washing of your hearing, tuning up to the level that is in your highest good, allowing you to not only 
know clairaudient, clairsentiently, but to hear clairaudiently. When you open to receive all of the gifts that you are, being able to hear spirit, it allows a beautiful flow into your life. It allows increased faith in your action in your doing, constantly and consistently. Allowing the voice within to be the driving force in your life. I am Metatron, and I have spoken here this day. This is Julie Geigel, channeling Archangel Metatron, and you are listening to Angel Talk Tuesday hosted every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And coming up in our next segment is the lovely Susan Schuler channeling Jacob, a master teacher of the Akasha. And we'll be back in two minutes after this short station break. The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. Do you need help with relationships, romance, or career? I'm a triple-tested, accurate, and ethical psychic medium and spiritual counselor. Simply click on my Call Me Now button at juliegeigel.com. Mediumship readings offer much closure and healing. This is Susan Schuler. Let me connect you to your loved ones on the other side. Schedule an appointment at mediumsusan.com. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Hosted every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern on omtimesradio.com. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. What? Why? Just wait for the inheritance. We've definitely got a rich uncle somewhere. We're one call away from the winner's circle at the Derby, dinners with multiple forks, a vacation home in the country, using summer as a verb. You don't actually think that, do you? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Angel Talk Tuesday. This is Susan Schuler. Thank you, Julie, for such a lovely channel from Metatron. Um, 
I'm always kind of left speechless after listening to him talk because he has so many words of wisdom. Uh, I am a channeler and I work with uh, Jacob, who is a master uh, teacher at the Akashic Records or in the Akashic Records. Um, he is who I work with to do my psychic readings as well as to do my past life readings. Uh, prior to doing this work full time, I was a high school English teacher for almost 25 years. And once I jumped into this, um, Julie has sort of dragged me along, not always kicking and screaming, but sometimes, um, to do a lot of teaching and different work with her um, through this medium. Julie's been channeling a lot longer than I have, um, but it is a wonderful tool to use when you're really trying to raise your own vibration. I'm a professional psychic medium and I am based in the Los Angeles area. I do readings um, via Skype and on the phone all over the world. And I do face-to-face uh, -face readings in uh, Santa Monica, uh, where my practice is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I also do small group readings and live mediumship and uh, psychic demonstrations. I do a lot of work in New York State, where I am from, and I also do a lot of work in California, around Orange County, as well as Los Angeles County. Um, Julie and I are currently teaching an online mentorship class uh, that we just started a few weeks ago, and it will go into the early spring. And then we will be offering a new 12-week uh, 1, 2, and 3 Lightworker class, which is pretty exciting, and we're very thrilled to be uh, allowing this sort of transition to happen with our teaching. We just did a mediumship demonstration online with the use of Zoom uh, last week, which was quite fun, and we will be doing more of those in the future as well. Uh, like I mentioned, I am from New York State, and I often travel back there. I will be going back on December 17th, and I will be staying for several weeks. And if you would like more information on how to reach me for an in-person reading in the Los Angeles area, or even a uh, phone reading or Skype reading, uh, or contact me while I am in the Western New York area. You can do so at my website, which is mediumsusan.com, or on my Facebook page at Psychic Medium Susan Schuler. So let me kind of change gears here for a second. I'm going to take myself off camera. You're going to hear me take a few breaths, and then I'm going to ask Jacob to come in and see what he has to say to us today. So let me just sort of... Take a nice deep breath as I ask him to step forward. Hello, dear beautiful souls of the earth. We are so very pleased that you have joined us today. We see your intensity your fragmented thinking, your levels of anxiety, and we wish you would believe us when we try to explain that things do not have to feel this way. Many of you feel so very alone, like all of the major and not so major decisions in your life must be made all by yourself. We see your uncertainty, your fear, your palpable frustration. We feel your pain. But much like a parent who tries to teach and lead with the development of their child as they grow, the same is true of our relationship with you. We can lead, but it is you who must take the initiative, thereby doing the heavy lifting yourselves. We feel your reluctance when the word meditation is even uttered and realize that hesitation comes not from your soul or spirit, but rather your ego. The ego who fully comprehends how much power it will lose 
if you realize what a powerful tool meditation can be in your life. We hear your frantic pleas for help as you utter your prayers out to the universe. Most of you even doubt these are heard. Simply willing to try anything to help with your frantic thoughts and lives. But even those of you with great faith that your prayers are being heard, you do not allow for a time to embrace the other side of the dialogue. So your prayers are only a one-sided conversation. We ask you now to think of the person you most adore on earth. Think of how you love and want the best for this person. How you would do anything for them. Now consider how this relationship would be if only they could communicate with you and you were unable to get through to them to react and respond to their pleas for help and questions. This is the relationship you have with your guides, angels, and loved ones if you do not set a time to sit with them in some form of meditation, you are only developing a weak, underdeveloped, one-sided relationship. And then, of course, you will feel all alone, for you are missing out on the vital, two-sided relationship. We also would like to mention that not all times will meditation be to communicate. For sometimes it is merely to give your mind a period of quiet time, a time to regroup, to sit in silence, to unplug yourself from those topsy-turvy lives that you have all created for yourselves a time without an agenda. We would like to remind you, though, that during these times, thoughts will still come in. Some of you seem to have the misconception that when you meditate, that your minds are supposed to be empty of thoughts. That simply isn't so, for you are humans and are designed to receive thoughts that come and go from the mind. The problem that many of you do is to berate yourselves for this and allow your ego to step forward, thereby permitting it to place judgments on all you feel and think during these quiet times you allow for yourselves. So rather than achieving a sense of accomplishment, you feel frustrated and like a failure. And your ego's mission is then been accomplished. You no longer wish to feel that way, so you listen to your ego when it tells you, oh, you cannot meditate, you are not built for it. Your mind is simply too active. Meditation is for those other New Age and Zen types. You are just too down to earth. Let's go back and turn the music on or watch the news. You know we are correct when we say this, for we watch on as this happens time and time again when you attempt to begin a meditation practice. 
But listen to what we just said. When you begin a meditation practice, a practice, this means you must do this often with regularity, not expecting the process to be perfect or always go smoothly. Even today's channelers who have been meditating for years have days when they want to crawl out of their skin during their meditation. You would not expect to play the piano or dance well without putting in the proper time and energy to be competent. So why would meditation be any different? Practice will never make perfect where this is concerned, but it will make it very effective and worthwhile. There are other times that meditation will allow you to simply sit with the spirit world touching and reconnecting yourself to the divine source of all that is. This form of sitting in the power of the great divine will allow you to gain new energy, downloading new energy and information, not only with God, but the collective consciousness that allows us all to be one. Sitting quietly with the spirit world and breathing in the love will allow you to refill your cup of life so you may go out into the world and give in the proper way that you have been assigned a willingly to do so in this lifetime. We would also like to clear up some misconceptions about what meditation is. For there are several ways to meditate. Some more anxious or those who deal with very active monkey mind may be able to reach these states with greater ease to start with the use of mantras. There are certain words that can be used that will heighten your electromagnetic resonancy. And these words repeated over in your mind again and again will not only help to keep your monkey mind focused on the task at hand, keeping the thoughts at bay, but it will also connect you to source quicker. There are many such sacred words that may be used, and your well-known OM is simply one of these energetic power words. Another technique can be the use of toning while meditating. And our channeler, Susan, used this a lot in her early days of meditation because she enjoyed singing as it allowed her an easy way to raise her own frequency. And the use of toning is much like singing. Least us not forget to also speak about how the breath is the vehicle that will help direct your meditation. It will take it in the proper direction. Just the simple task of taking a deep cleansing breath and releasing all the stale air will realign your focus and help take you to a deeper level of consciousness in a quicker, less painful way. 
You are beautiful spiritual beings of light. But without the use of meditation, you are cutting your guidance and your abilities short. You must find a productive practice that works for you. One that not only allows you to set up an ongoing dialogue with your spiritual guides and counsel, but one that gives you the opportunity to reconnect and align yourself to the divine, to bask in the glory, the light, the power. You are never alone. We are here to aid and help you in any way we can. We want you to excel, to stop the judgments that you place on yourself and others, to do all you came here to do, to thrive. Never forget, you came here for a divine mission and you are loved. This is Susan Schuler. That was Jacob channeling, or that was Jacob being channeled by Susan. Let me just whew, bring myself back on video. Wow. Um, <laughs> for anybody who's ever channeled, um, hmm. It's really hard to kind of get your head back into the game once you've been channeling, but I will say um, it's an excellent way to raise up your vibration. And um, it, it's not that Julie or I are truly special to do this. Anybody can do this. So um, also the one thing Julie and I, I'm not sure if we mentioned, is we are accepting calls at 202-570-7057 for a free psychic reading. So please call in today. Thank you. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Would you like to speak to an Archangel? Hi, I'm Julie Geigel, Trans Channel for Archangel Metatron. Book your session now and get the clarity and insight you need to make this your best year yet. Past life readings promote understanding about current life situations. This is psychic medium Susan Schuler. Let me help you gain insight. Book an appointment today at mediumsusan.com. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday, hosted every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern on OMTimesRadio.com. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. The rocket launched into the air. And then crashed into the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day. Even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Okay, hold on. Good morning, everyone. This is Julie, Julie Geigel, 
And we are heading over to Facebook. We're gonna go live on Facebook for our last 20 minute discussion. So Susan, I'm gonna have you pop in here and say hello while I go live on Facebook. Okay, hi everybody. It's wonderful to be here again. Um, we will be in a moment, once Julie gets us hooked through to Facebook, we will be discussing what we channel today, or I should say what uh, Metatron and Jacob had to say to us um, about sort of not being hasty with our decision making as well as meditation. Julie, good. Okay. Do you want to keep going? Awesome, awesome, Susan. I am back, and let's go ahead and um, discuss uh, discuss those messages. We'll start with Metatron, and then we'll move into the channeling that uh, you did with Jacob. Okay, perfect, Julie. You know, first of all, Metatron began today's channel um, by asking us to put our hands over our heart. And um, for those of you who may be watching right now, I highly suggest starting off by putting your hand on your heart right now. Um, because to me, he starts off in this very simple way. And it's such an amazing way to engage yourself with your emotions. And so every time he does that, I'm almost like, yay, I forgot to do that. So, so to me, that was just a brilliant way for him to begin the meditation. So just honestly, during your day, put your hand over your chest occasionally just to kind of reconnect yourself in. Um, he started talking about retrograde. Woohoo, retrograde, gotta love retrograde. <laughs> um, so he started talking about that and about how retrograde oftentimes is connected into fear and we have this anxiety connected with it. And what he's saying, it's really, it doesn't have to be that because it can offer us so much change and release. And I like this because it's a bit of a, a different way of looking at it. Um, and I think it's a very helpful way for us to look at it. Um, he said it's a, yeah. a time to remove self and reflect, and the, which takes us right into what we were really talking about with the meditation. Um, and he was inviting us to incorporate um, being in the moment with meditation. Um, and he even said, divine inspiration can flow through you. So if you think about it, it's like we all want to be closer to God, I think, in some way or another. Some of, some of us may label it differently. But, um, but the simple act of allowing yourself to be present, and as Julie said, even just sitting quietly, it's not like you have to go lotus position and go om and go on, be gone for 30 minutes. It can just be sitting. Um, so, yeah, and I then, think that, then, was a, that was a big shift for me, Susan, and I just want to jump in quickly because, you know, I was one of those people that I'm too busy to meditate. And I just couldn't fathom <laughs> taking 30 minutes or an hour out of my day to sit quietly and do nothing. It's like, okay, <laughs> I've got a lot I could be getting done during that time. Um, so it really, you know, when I began to shift in um, making meditation a priority in my life was first of all, I got rid of the word because wow, how much pressure is attached to that word? of meditation, you know, meditating. I have to empty my mind, I have to be quiet, I, I you know, can't um, focus in or zoom in on anything, I, I'm doing it wrong, or there's a million different things that I have to do to make it right or perfect. Um, so when I just let that go, and I think that really was when I came into Marianne Williamson and Eckhart Tolle, and they just really talk about you know, all meditation is, is being present in your life. And so, um, yeah, the closing your eyes and um, listening to a meditation or um, having a specific practice is beautiful. But if that's too much of a leap for you, start anywhere, start somewhere. And, you know, the breath, and we both talked about um, the breath today, that can be the bridge. Um, but for me, I get up early before anybody else in the house and I sit quietly with a cup of coffee and I call it my quiet time and I just, I spend that time praying. I, I have a, several prayers that I just repeat consistently in my mind and when my mind takes me away and I'm, I'm too thinking too much, then I'll bring, move back into a prayer. And so it really has changed my life. <laughs> Yeah, that's so true, Julie. And it's interesting listening to you say that because even 
even when I was like, I want to say 13 years old, I used to sit and have tea every morning at the kitchen table by myself and just kind of veg out. And I realize now that even at that early age, that was like a form of a meditative practice. Um, but one of the things that Metatron also said, um, you are the block to your success. Um, being busy drowns out the voice of spirit and higher consciousness. And um, I immediately, when I heard this, I thought of a very dear friend of mine who cannot even, she's unable to even speak with me on the phone without doing eight other things. It's really distracting and annoying. It makes me want to scream and go over to the other side of the phone and say, just sit still. Um, but I think most of us live our lives that way. You know, where we're doing, especially with all our technology, we're doing eight things at once. And we're truly getting in our own way. Um, and it is keeping us from having a higher connection. So to me, that was just brilliant that he said. Um, I don't know, Julie, anything you want to share on that before? I can keep going. You know how I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think we're going to shift gears a little bit, Susan. We're going to move over to Jacob, unless there was any last thoughts from Metatron you wanted to share. That's fine. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, I just love how um, aligned uh, Jacob is with Metatron. And <laughs> trust me, Susan and I don't have any conversation about the forecast. We have zero interaction, and this is straight from the cuff. I mean, we're talking, I call it cold. Um, it's like a cold reading where we're just, we're stepping aside and letting that, those messages flow. So we literally go off, I go into a meditation and I channel the forecast ahead of time, like a month ahead of time. And we literally have like a paragraph that we each kind of go off of. But I'm always um, so thrilled when our messages are in so much alignment with each other. and. You know, Jake, I love Jacob's um, channeling. I love Susan's channeling. Um, He's so no nonsense, isn't he? He always cuts to it. <laughs> oh, I love the an analogies. Um, your prayers are only one sided. So he really talked a lot about how we typically, when we're praying, and I'm Catholic, and I know you are too, Susan, We, I pray a lot. I pray all day long, Susan. Um, thank you. I love you. That's that whole Pono Pono prayer that has just been ingrained in my consciousness. And I am just, it's a song I sing all day long. Thank you. I love you. And it's a beautiful prayer. But <laughs> Jacob pointed out that that, you know, be aware it is a prayer. And when you are praying, that you're not opening to receive the, that divine inspiration. When there's too much going on in that mental mind, it's really difficult for a divine inspiration to flow. And he likened it to having a one-sided conversation with a beloved. And, you know, what if that beloved could not speak back? that you're pouring your heart out and all of your frustrations and fears and, and they can't talk back to you. Um, so to open up to a two-sided conversation, it really is important to incorporate meditation. So like I said, when I sit during my quiet time, I have that time where I'm going, moving into a prayer or making a request but then I'm opening myself up to just being quiet and receiving any inspiration, receiving any messages. So without the two-sided conversation, you are really missing a huge, huge opportunity to make your life easier. Yeah, it's funny because I remember recently mentioning to my mother, and I grew up Catholic, but I don't practice Catholicism anymore, but my mother, who's a very strong Christian, reads her Bible every morning. And I remember saying to her, I said, well, Mama, that's great that you're in prayer so much, but when do you actually receive guidance? And she, she sort of looked at me confused. So I, you know, I do think that there are a lot of people that don't take that time to receive the guidance. And I mean, it is those quiet moments. I have to say one of the best things that used to work for me um, is going to the gym. On the walk home from the gym, and I, I live about three blocks from my gym, 
um, it was I used to get these amazing messages where I couldn't get home quick enough to write them down. And it was just, I think because my body was kind of like, okay, well, good workout, you're there. And it was, I just wasn't really worried about anything. I was just kind of going through the motions. And I like what Jacob was saying about all the different forms of meditation that are uh, available to us that, you know, we, it's not about sitting in the lotus position and going home for 30 minutes. It's about sitting in the power, which we as mediums do quite frequently. That's the way we've been trained. Um, but uh, Julie, how did you get into meditation? I know I took transcendental meditation back in the 90s, and that was what sort of got me going. But what got you going? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say that it was just, um, you know, trying to be present in my life. I've, I'm a huge fan of Oprah and Deepak's 21 day meditation. And I have to say that there, that program really has helped me to establish a consistent and a regular practice. And it really helped me to see the value in the meditation. Um, but yeah, that he talked about toning and there's so many different, you can do walking meditation. You can turn anything that you're doing in your day into meditation and you know what i've done is really try to be present i'm trying to be present in my life i'm trying to be present with my emotions i'm trying to be present with um my loved ones and i'm just uh trying to practice presence continually non-stop and that is Eckhart talks about how that is uh, meditation in and of itself is just being present in your life, being present with your emotions, with yourself, with your being. Um, we're going to, I want to make sure that we have enough time because we do have, oh, um, uh, we've got a couple um, questions here and we're going to start with Angela from our chat room. We're over on our Zoom platform. Be sure if you don't ever want to miss another episode or you want to join us for a free psychic reading at the end here, be sure to sign up at uh, bit.do forward slash Angel Talk Tuesday. So that's www.bit.do, B-I-T dot do forward slash Angel Talk Tuesday. And uh, Angela has a question for us here. And she says, uh, how can I meet the influential people I am trying to reach? Um, that's a beautiful, beautiful question, Angela. And as I, I mean, I love that question because I totally get it. Um, but how, what I do is I've got a beautiful mantra that I use, and I actually stole this from Oprah. I love Oprah. Um, use me, Lord, for a purpose greater than myself. So in my prayers, in my daily routine, I say that mantra, repeat that mantra, and I ask, I ask God, I ask Spirit, whatever that is for you, I ask God to bring me the people that will best benefit from the work that I do. So I let go, I do, I take the action, absolutely. I do what I, I, as much as I can do, but then I surrender, I surrender and I just show up and I say, God, <laughs> you're in charge and I'm here. I'm showing up for you today. Yeah. Any thoughts, Susan? Yeah, I absolutely agree with what you're saying, Julie. And I think that the important part also is, we're going back to what we were saying earlier, you have to be aware to listen to when those synchronicities do appear for you. Um, I can give you my experience when I first met Julie. I actually walked by her at an airport. We were on our way to a conference together. We'd never met each other, but we'd communicate it. And I immediately noticed as I walked by her, I'm like, this is somebody who's gonna be important in my life. And it's like, because I was cognizant and open to that, I felt that connection right away. So it's like you have to make sure that you're not missing the opportunities when they are presenting themselves to you. You have to be in a state of um, a higher vibration or a state of grace so you're open to receiving that when, that, when the moments do occur. Because they do occur and they can pass you by really quickly if you don't um, sort of jump on, jump on the opportunities. Because the people, they will be presented, it, it will happen unequivocally. Julie? Yeah, awesome, awesome. All right, just checking in with Ohm Times to see if we have a caller over there. And um, 
Yeah, we have a repeat, Kim. And Kim, I just want to say thank you so much for your support. Uh, we've read for you several times on the show, and we only read for people once every 12 months. So check back with us in 12 months uh, to get another reading on your situation, uh, because we'd love to uh, share that love and spread that across the world. All right, Susan, we've got about one minute left, and I just wanted to mention um, something well, I, I want to reiterate something Metatron said about this not being a good week to enter in and enter into any um, uh, it, hasty decisions. So this is really a time to take a step back and gather your research, gather the information, um, study, ask questions, and um, sit with whatever you're contemplating, whatever you're considering, sit with that in meditation and ask for that inspiration, ask for that divine guidance or divine action to help you make a good decision. Um, retrograde isn't so much about taking action as it is about reflecting, um, but it's also about a, an opportunity to redo. So if something uh, you tried something in the past that didn't work, retrograde's a good time to come back and try that again. Any last uh, thoughts, Susan? No, and I'm just going to end with what you said or what Metatron said. Everything we need, we already have. Ooh, yeah, that was that's a good one. All right, everyone, this is Julie Geigel and Susan Schuler here on Angel Talk Tuesday. We hope to see you back here next week for our energy forecast. Have a lovely and blessed day, everyone. Bye-bye, everybody.